approach track to Dyson at six. Energy nine at seven or six. This is Valley approach control over. Seven at six coming up. Go down on me. Clearance for a straight NILS approach. Energy nine at seven oh six. Landing runway one three. Wind southeast ten. Altimeter three zero zero six. Clear for straight NILS approach. Report passing the automatic. Seven at six. An air traffic controller is expecting your arrival. Outside your Rain Street window, you just make out the flexing wingtip. Attention is on the instrument panel. You are about to make an instrument approach to an airport. The approach plates show that it is 300 feet above sea level. The instrument runway is over one mile long. There is an instrument landing system, surveillance radar, high intensity lighting, and a brand new landing aid, a visual glide slope indicator. As the approach is made through the overcast, the pilot must not only maintain correct flight attitude, but must constantly be checking the many items preparatory to landing. continues down through the overcast. The pilot's eyes strain for the first sight of the high intensity light. At breakout, he sees light dimly through the mist, then flashing strobe lights. The new landing aids are two rows of red and white lights on each side of the runway. They are VGSIs or visual glide slope indicators. He can tell at a glance from the visual placement of the colors of each row that he is on the glide path. All types of visual glide slope indicators were subjected to intensive evaluation at the Federal Aviation Agency's testing facility near Atlantic City, New Jersey. Before VGSI, it was more difficult to maintain an even rate of descent. The pilot had to recognize as soon as possible if the rate would carry him to the touchdown area. If he saw that he was undershooting, he added power as soon as possible, which brought along with it the problem of airport noise abatement. After the installation of the visual glide slope indicators, an aircraft, when on the glide slope, will always be at the correct altitude above the surrounding terrain. The low-level application of power will become unnecessary. A recent survey of over 14 million landings in all types of aircraft showed that jet aircraft were more susceptible to undershooting than other types. Overshooting can be partially controlled by speed brakes, spoilers, or additional flaps. Some aircraft are easily stopped by brake application or have engines that can develop considerable reverse thrust. Jets cannot generate much reverse thrust. The second pressing need is established by the apparent loss of the horizon when a pilot is making a long approach over water, over unlighted foreground at night, or when the natural horizon is confused by mountains or rising ground. The third need is during transition from instrument to visual flight. As the pilot descends the ILS or GCA glide path, he must transfer to visual flight as he emerges from the overcast. The overlap of a VGSI with ILS or GCA will make the transition much easier. At fields where back course approaches are made, utilizing a localizer, the pilot receives a left-right indication. The glide slope is estimated. A visual glide slope indicator will help him correct any displacement from the glide slope 
as he transfers from instrument to visual flight. Another application will be at fields where neither a localizer or radar is available. At such fields, the approach is made by arriving over a radio facility and computing an approximate glide slope using speed and distance. Here, the availability of VGSI, which the pilot can see as he emerges from the overcast, is of great assistance. All the visual glide slope indicators tested utilize the ability of the eye to recognize misalignment or color. Some systems used, in effect, a combination of both. The evaluation of glide slope indicators was carried out by more than 100 pilots with varying degrees of experience. They flew all types of aircraft, including this F-9F, as well as general aviation aircraft, like this Aero Commander. Various large motor jet aircraft were also used in the test program. Visual glide slope indicators tested at Atlantic City were the following systems. The tricolor system, the Navy mirror system, the Air Force interim or amber system, the double bar system, and the red-white RAE or Calvert system. The tricolor system uses a projector. The light is emitted through a tricolor filter. The beam is interrupted 40 times a minute by a motor-driven shutter. The pilot sees a flashing amber light if above glide path, a red light if too low, while a flashing green indicates an on-glide path signal. Seen here during a night evaluation flight is the tricolor system. The system is composed of the two flashing green lights just outside the runway edge lights. The green color we see indicates that the aircraft is on the glide slope. The second system tested was the Navy mirror system. It consists of a light source, a reflecting concave mirror, and a row of green datum lights. When on the glide path, the ball of light is bisected by the datum lights. The system is designed for carrier operations where the space is limited. Here it is in operation. The position of the ball of light above or below the datum lights indicates above or below the glide slope. The third system, the Air Force Amber, is similar to the mirror system, but uses space instead of a reflecting mirror. The source light is located 60 feet behind the datum light. The Air Force system is seen here during a night test run. The indicator is on the left side of the runway. The pilot is on the glide slope. This is indicated by the amber source light bisecting the green datum light, as in the Navy mirror. The fourth system tested was the double bar system. Three amber lights are located on elevated poles, 500 feet from the threshold and 170 feet from each side of the runway. 500 feet further in and at ground level are five white lights. Note the low intensity aiming light located in the center of the runway. When on the glide slope, the white lights are lined up with the amber lights as in an artificial horizon. Seen during this evaluation flight test of the system, the pilot is beginning to go slightly above the glide slope. This system does not provide guidance as close to the runway threshold as the others tested. The RAE system referred to in the test under the code name Red-White uses the principle of color identification. In this system, 12 light source housings, each containing three high-intensity sealed beam lamps, are installed, six housings on each side of the runway. At the focal point of each lamp reflector is a two-inch slit 
which acts like the aperture of a pinhole camera. In operation, the system is simple but most effective. At the rear of each housing are the lamps. Directly in front is the red and white filter from which the system derives its name. The light coming through the filter has the top half red and the bottom half white. Installed immediately in front of the filter is a transition bar. This narrow metal bar provides a zone of transition which to a pilot making an approach appears as a pink color. As it goes through the slit, the light reverses. In effect, we now have a red light at the bottom and a white light at the top with a narrow pink band between. We have seen the indications projected from only one row of housings. Located 500 feet in front of the rear row of lights is an equally spaced row of lights. The front row is 750 feet from the threshold. The rear row, 1,250 feet. The combined beams project toward the pilot as follows. A channel of light indicating the glide slope is projected upward at a desired angle. The channel is 25 feet deep at the downwind bar. This channel can be widened to 50 feet by moving the row of lights 1,000 feet apart. A distinct advantage is the fact that the pilot is given adequate warning when he is about to go above or below the glide slope. This warning is accomplished by the change in color of lights passing through a pink transition. As he starts below the glide slope, he receives a warning by the front row of lights, changing from white to pink to full red when he is actually below the glide path. When he is on the glide slope, the front row appears white and the back row appears red. In this example, both rows of lights are white. The aircraft is too high. As the pilot descends, the back row of lights transitions through pink to full red. The front row remains white. The aircraft is now on the glide slope. This full system may be used at any major airport. It has a visual range of five miles or more under optimum daylight conditions, and more, of course, at night. For smaller airports, the system may be cut down to this configuration. For private airstrips, it is even possible that the system could operate effectively cut down to this configuration. The optimum visibility will drop to about one or two miles. The results of the tests showed the RAE system to be operationally superior from the standpoint of pilot preference, measured performance, and ease of maintenance. The system has been adopted by the Federal Aviation Agency, as well as the United States Air Force. Installation is proceeding around the country. This constant testing of new products and ideas is the primary function of the Federal Aviation Agency's Experimental Center. Its dedicated mission is to make American aviation the best and safest possible.